Mark DiCarlo. Tonight, a very special episode. Mark gambles with destiny by swimming an hour after eating with Tony Shalom from Wings. Investigative reporter Hal Small goes Eskimo. Heavy metal music teacher Sabine. And the scrap. And now, say goodnight to Mark DiCarlo. One more talk of scraps, ladies and gentlemen. You guys sound great. You in a good mood tonight? I feel great tonight. Steve, how do you feel? I feel fabulous. Phew, you guys all feel great? Yeah. Folks, we're all feeling great. Let me introduce the last great guy on our set. Please welcome our announcer and pundit, Mr. Eric Charles Boardman. <laughs> It is good to hear the bands in a good mood. I know, Mark, you're up. Absolutely. The audience is red hot. Uh, I wish I could agree with poet philosopher James Brown and say I feel good, but I've got the blues. Oh. What's wrong? Oh. Well, I don't want to burden you because you've got a show here, no, but here uh, my mojo, my mojo's not working. It just won't work. Now what? Uh, my gree gree is fine. The juju hand I bought, the goofy dust. You know, the gypsy woman told my mama on the day I was born I'd be working with a guy named DiCarlo someday. Yeah. And so that's all come true, but on this show, I'm mojo-less. Now, I'm, I'm not familiar with, what is this mojo you speak of? You don't speak blues? I don't. I thought you were from uh, Chicago. I am. I mean, for the folks at home who might not know. Can you really, can you define it in a concise way? Can you define love? <laughs> Go, just go on with your little show. I'll put a brave game face on. Okay. He uh, got to have the mojo. I know our first guest has mojo to spare. He was selling it backstage right before we came out here. He's a very funny character actor on stage, film, and on television. He's been in on, uh, at least several movies that I know of. And uh, what, what? IQ and uh, another movie called Stuart Smalley. But you probably see him every single week on NBC on the hit sitcom Wings. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the very funny Mr. Tony Shalab. <laughs> How the? Oh. Thank you. You feel Thank that? You. Oh. you know what that is? That's mojo something. Exactly. <laughs> it's washing over you. Thank you so much for having. You know what? I want to thank you most of all for not making me shave today. Because I just, I just didn't, you know, I just didn't want to shave. I got one word for you, my friend. Shave. I know. No. What? What? Swarthy. Swarthy. There you go. So you've been, uh, you've been in Hollywood for quite some time. You're doing very well. It's going, going good. Now, Thank you me. seem to pretty much have cornered the market on, like, taxi cab rolls and foreigner Yeah, what guys. is this taxi cab thing? I don't yeah. know. Yeah, there was Quick Change, a movie called Quick Change that uh, I did with Bill Murray a mm -hmm. few years ago. Saw that. That was fun. <laughs> and, uh, um, and that one, uh, I played a New York cabbie who... <laughs> There's a very lost New York cabbie right there. <laughs> and on Wings? And on Wings, I play Antonio Scarpacci. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who, rumor has it, is, uh, is an Italian cab driver on Nantucket. No, you're, you're Italian. I am. Okay. See, so. A lot of Italians in uh, the Boston area, too. That's true. So Big he Italian. must have uh, filtered. <laughs> I don't know. So you're pretty, you're, you're, you've become known in the Hollywood industry as a, a, a master of the dialect, a master of the, in, uh, the accent. Well, occasionally I do parts you know, where, I, where I don't speak with an accent. Really? Oh. We thought we'd give I you a little accent uh, <laughs> aptitude test here. Okay. We have three lines in English that I would like you to read with an accent, but we're going to take the accents from the audience. So someone just yell out an accent that you'd like to hear Tony do. Poland, New York, Cockney. I heard New York and Polish. Combine those two. A New York Polish guy <laughs> saying that. <laughs> 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 
You want to see my passport? Excellent, very good. All right. One more, another, uh, another accent you'd like to hear. Scottish. I'm American as apple pie. Very good. All right, we got one more. Last but not least, I heard Chinese, I heard Chinese and Jewish. Jewish, watch out. A Chinese Jew. A Chinese Jew? Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> this is going to take a little work now. I'm a method actor. Okay? I swear, by all that is holy, I am a U.S. citizen. <laughs> oh, boy. I heard you're in a new movie, uh, the Stuart Smalley movie this summer. You yeah, well, that is uh, that uh, is being shot right now. Actually, it's, it won't be released until later this year. It's called Stuart Saves His Family. Are you familiar with that character on Saturday Night Live? And do you play Alfred. an ethnic person in that? I don't. I'm happy to report I play an agent oh, that's cool. in Chicago. Oh, so I get to do an accent, but it's a Chicago accent. So now you're, you're, both your parents are Lebanese. You do all these fabulous accents. I'm actually kind of curious. Where, where were you? Were you born in America? Oh, sure, sure. And where exactly were you born? I was born in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. You know anybody from Wisconsin? Wisconsin? You know the... Yes, I know Wisconsin. Heartland, uh, that can only mean one thing. America's dairy land. It's cheese time! Come on down there, right. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 1987 Miss Dairyland Princess, Helga Hauser. Thank you, Helga. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Thank you. Mm, that's good cheese. Hold on. Now, Tony, you're from Wisconsin. Yes, yes, I'm from Wisconsin. Do you know your cheese? Uh, Mark, I am cheese. <laughs> I hope so, sir. Eric, if you would approach the bench. What we've done What's here, Tony, here? is we've selected five different types of cheeses from all over the world. Oh, yeah. We are going to blindfold you, and we're going to have you taste each of these cheeses in a row. If you can identify three out of five of these cheeses, you win. If you don't, you lose. Lose? What do, what do, what, what's, what do I lose? If you lose, you'll be forced to chug this entire can of natural processed cheese cheddar. Wait a minute. Now, that's it, losing? That's losing. Oh, okay. All right. It has real cheese in it. Okay, good. Now, if you win... What if I win? Eric will chug the entire can of Texas cheese right up. Wait a minute. I'm telling you, Thank nothing you. gets your mojo working better than a little processed cheese. Yeah. Wait a minute. That? All right, you ready? Well, what if I get off right? <laughs> then I will personally hand sew you a tuxedo made of cheese cloth. How about that? <laughs> All right, better. sign them up there. Okay, okay, ladies thanks, and gentlemen. Guys. We have to mix up the cheeses. Do I get a cigarette? <laughs> to cleanse your palate, you mean? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, cheese number one. I can do this blindfold. It's on a toothpick, so be careful. You Where is it? Put okay. it in your mouth. It's on the end of the. Right. <laughs> that cheese is? That, that would be your Gouda. I'm sorry, it is not Gouda. I'm oh. oh, that was a mild cheddar. That's one against. I, I think you're mistaken. No, that's no, a mild no. cheddar. Here's cheese number two. Cheese number two. Wait a minute now. Wait. Cleanse your palate. I was going to say mild cheddar. Oh, easy. Easy. That's a pepper. Um, that's a jalapeno. Um, that's a jalapeno cheddar cheese. Is that close enough? We can take that. Yes. Judges? That? Yes, we'll take that. One right, green, one wrong. One wrong. Well, what was it? It was, it was a, a green uh, cheese pepper thing. That was close enough. Here's oh, cheese number on. three. What pepper's pepper? Okay. Mm. One left. Mm. <laughs> the judges need your answer. It's sharp cheddar. I'm just 
Is that right? Yes, yes it is! Yes. Check that out. Oh! <laughs> you know, you can take the boy out of Wisconsin. I hate you. <laughs> If you or someone you know has herpes, then this is important to watch because the product I'm going to share with you is guaranteed to work. It's called Azurex. There is no cure for herpes, but there is something guaranteed to stop outbreaks, provide soothing relief, and accelerate healing. In this attack pack, there are five individual swabs. They are easy to carry and easy to use. Just snap it to activate it. If you feel an outbreak coming on, apply Azurex after that first tingle and immediately feel the relief. So if you're looking for something that's powerful, natural, and really works, then order Azurex now. Thanks very much, and damn it, I can't say Swiss without smiling. From time to time on our show, we're going to be bringing you our undercover investigative reporter who we have sent all through the country to go behind the scenes and ferret out for us the hidden side of American culture, Tony. Yeah. Things that you might not know about that you probably should know. For the past few months, uh, our personal investigative reporter has taken on a new identity, and today he's here to share with us some of the experiences that he's had during these months. Please welcome to Good Night America our very own investigative reporter, Mr. Hal Small. <laughs> How are you, Hal? A little warm. Sure. <laughs> but happy to be here. Great. Now, I understand for the past few months you've assumed a new identity for us and you've been kind of undercover in a uh, community. You want to tell us about that? That's correct, Mark. I have been studying the uh, Eskimos, <laughs> as you might have guessed. Sure. <laughs> So we, we, you've been on a full expense account. You've been up in, I think, Nome, Alaska, well, studying with the... Uh... Unfortunately, I was not able to go to Alaska because I have a circulation problem, and my doctor forbade me to go to Alaska. So I was forced, uh, although forced may be the wrong word, to, uh, to learn about the Eskimos from the Eskimos who live in Southern California, <laughs> mostly around Coldwater Canyon uh, in uh, North Hollywood. <laughs> I knew that was kind of the Eskimo hood. Yes, That's where they hang out <laughs> there. Uh, uh, so you didn't actually go anywhere. You were here in California the well, entire time. Well, it would be time. wrong to say I didn't go anywhere. <laughs> I did go to North Hollywood. Sure, okay. Do they maintain their own cultures and diets? I oh, mean, what's yes, a, they do. Uh, what's an Eskimo meal a, like? Well, uh, blubber. Yeah, what is this? Uh, excuse me. I, I don't mean to interrupt, but I, I, I was talking earlier about this, you know, racial, ethnic thing. Now, do they, uh, do they ever get offended? by this whole, you know, this whole Eskimo pie thing, you know? I mean, well, you know, because I, 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 I've done some reading. No, this is, this is true. I've, I've done a little reading on encyclopedias and so forth. And I know that the Eskimo pie is not really an Eskimo food. No. Get out of here. No. In fact, it's, it's much, in fact, when they use that term, it's much like what well, we use at like cow pie, you know, that kind of. Is that true? And in fact, well. So in, they would never eat one of those. In so. Alaska. Ice cream is like Coles to Newcastle. Why would you want it? Exactly. Mm -hmm. There's tons of it up there. Yes, already. So they don't eat Eskimo pies, they eat blubber. They eat blubber, yes. Uh, and it's not bad, but it tastes like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> really, really greasy. Ch chicken skin is what it, it tastes like. Now, I have a bit of a weight problem, <laughs> exacerbated by the size of my parka, but nonetheless. <laughs> so I was delighted to discover a new product called I Can't Believe It's Not Blubber, which is a... <laughs> No calorie, no calorie. That's it right there. I'd like to take a taste. Uh, just stick your hand right in there. Uh, they don't use silverware in, uh, in Alaska because... <laughs> you ate the cheese. You're just like a little dairy monkey, aren't you? Go ahead and taste that. Oh. That's awful. <laughs> but it's, it's authentic. I can't believe that's not blubber. <laughs> if, you like, if you like blubber, you will like I can't believe it's not blubber. <laughs> 
Sure. <laughs> what if you don't like blubber? Then you should probably stay away from it. <laughs> okay. Uh, is there is the politically correct term for Eskimo? Do they prefer to be called something else? Well, there is a group of uh, politically active, sort of cutting edge Eskimos who prefer to be called frigid Americans. <laughs> okay. That's good to know. It doesn't have much to do with their, well, it describes the, the climate of their native land, but they, as I said earlier, are warm-hearted and, uh, and also hot-blooded. Ah. So uh, <laughs> get a male Eskimo near a female Eskimo and <laughs> sparks start to fly. Sure. So they are the farthest thing from frigid in that sense. Well, they'd have to be. They have yes. to be a hardy group to live way up there in oh, the yes. Arctic oh, Circle. Yes. Huh? Yes, um, you've been doing it for a couple months now. What was the toughest part about becoming an Eskimo? Well, you have to share your wife with the entire tribe. And although my wife enjoyed this very much, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's up to the woman, you see. And none of the Eskimo women would go along with uh, really with no. See, I would have thought that would be very common in North Hollywood. No, it was something about my breath, or I don't know what it was. It just uh -huh. uh, very disappointing. <laughs> now, I thought I had a certain amount of animal magnetism, but I guess not to an Eskimo. <laughs> <laughs> now you you finished. You wrote a book while you were up there during yes, the two I months. Yes, I did. Uh, you see, there was lots of uh, time in North Hollywood. Sure. <laughs> Those long nights. <laughs> so I wrote uh, Eskimo Like Me, ah. which I hope is the uh, first in a long line of books by me. Great. And I wrote the whole thing. I didn't have help from anyone. <laughs> but I didn't print it myself, of course. Sure. The publisher did that, but I wrote the whole thing. So uh, we, we were talking a little bit uh, ago about the, uh, you know, the frigid stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, do they have different... Uh, Communal well, you know, the rituals? Major, the major or? sex act in Eskimo society, if I'm allowed to use the word sex. Sure. Is, it's uh, okay with me. Course, Good with me. Okay. The, uh, the Eskimo kiss. Right. Eskimo kiss? Which is the nose rubbing. Right. That's how the Eskimos kiss. And uh, it doesn't sound like much, but don't knock it till you've tried it. I mean, uh -huh. It really gets a pretty, pretty igloo melting uh, <laughs> pitch there when a couple Eskimos are going at it. And my wife and I did practice as well. In fact, that's why I brought with me these Eskimo condoms. <laughs> and for you. There you go. For and you. Slap that on there. There you go. Okay. These go on your nose? That's where they go. And this will guarantee safe Eskimo kissing. Mm-hmm. How exactly do they work? I, I, I'm there. <laughs> Come on, you're an actor. Uh, I'm married. So. Okay. <laughs> and you're married? Yes, very happily. I might. Where's the lady from Finland? Come here, Rita. <laughs> I want to try this on you, if you don't mind. I don't have that one. That's okay. I'm wearing one. <laughs> so you come here often? Oh yeah. Oh. Oh, that's great. <laughs> That's great. We'll be right back with more Good Night America. Thank you very much.
Now, my next guest has worked with Axl Rose, Megadeth, and downtown Julie Brown. What a hat trick. What's a nice 70 year old Australian lady know that these rockers want to know? How to do a rock and roll scream. So please welcome the anti mame of heavy metal, Sabine. Sabine, where are you? Here, Sabine. It's a pleasure. So what's the secret? Can, could you teach us how to rock and roll scream? Yeah, you've all got strong bodies. It's, <laughs> it, it's a case of not doing too much breathing. See, everyone else will tell you to la 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 la, put it up in the mask. That's all right if you want to do light leader stuff and classical stuff. But rock is, and most great operatic work too is la di di da di. It's tight tummy muscles. It's getting the tummy muscles tight and pulling the sound down into your body. He's already, aren't you? I want you to, I Fascinating. Want, I want you to say, I am in great voice today. I am in great voice today. Yeah, it's even bigger. Wow. Yes. That's good. <laughs> but I'm a little bound up. <laughs> <laughs> so Actually, what? that's one of the secrets. When the boys and girls can't quite get their, their tummy muscles tight enough, I have to say to them, pretend you're going to the bathroom. This is embarrassing, but that feeling of bearing down is what, is what really gives you that. I would, have to take a, <laughs> see, I would have to take a magazine with me if I, uh, if I followed your method. You can take a sheet of music instead. Oh, okay. So, now, so you, you, you tighten up the stomach muscles. Now. Yeah, and bear down. This works best for heavy metal? It works for best for all kinds of voices. You are doing it without knowing it. You're Italian and you're a great announcer. You've been doing this for years, you know, all the marvelous things you do. Mark, you obviously do that because you know you've got to project and you're not shy. Why, yes, I do, Sabine. Exactly. And like then, you, then you don't hurt your throat. Yeah, but there's a big difference between talking loud and rock and roll singing. Yes. <laughs> well, can, teach me how to do that. Well, the rock and roll singing is kind of, it's passionate and it's like children, you know, when children fight and carry on in the, in the streets. Well, rock and roll would be something like, the right to rock! Or, uh, what's the other one? A child blew a child away, away. Hey, lady. <laughs> That's great. Okay, that. Thank you very much, Sabine. <laughs> we will be back with more Good Man America right after this. Don't go away. Time for our fabulous group, the uh, Scraps. And thank you once again to our guest, Mr. Tony Shallow, our investigative reporter, Mr. Hal Smalls, yeah. the lovely and talented Sabine, Eric Charles Borman, I'm Mark DiCarlo. Hey, Sabine, what is Wings on? It's on 8:30 p.m. on Thursday evening no, on gotta NBC. Sing it. Oh, Wings is on 8:30 on Thursdays on NBC. That's it. Good night, America. Thanks for watching.